الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله from the قواعد or foundation principles Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'a mentions in his Majmu'a Fatawa he mentions a very applicable principle which we can benefit from in how we deal with fitna, how we deal with trials and afflictions and how we deal with the people of fitna, the people who afflict the Muslims with their fitna, rather or whether it be from the people of Ahl Bid'ah or the people of Ahl Kufr. And this principle is as follows, and we're going to give you just a very brief discussion as I benefited from a short discussion of this principle from Sheikh or Alama Falah Ismail, Hafidullah Ta'ala, one of our ulama in Kuwait. And he mentioned, and before we get into it, let's talk about just the basic meaning of this principle, and then we'll show some of the examples that Sheikh Falah mentioned. A soul of fitna, Turk al ma'lum ila ghayr ma'lum. Again, so, so for those who know a little bit of Arabic, Maybe you can memorize this because it's very beneficial with the understanding. Usul of fitna, tark al ma'lum ila ghayr ma'lum. Usul of fitna, tark al ma'lum ila ghayr ma'lum. Now, when we look at this qa'idah, this principle, which means the foundation of fitna, usul of fitna, the foundation of fitna is leaving what is known, al-ma'lum, for that which is unknown, for that which is not uh, known, okay? So if we contemplate the meaning here, we see that what the Shaykh was articulating, what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is articulating, and Shaykh Falah uh, gave us some beautiful examples, uh, is that the foundation of this, these trials and affliction that we we see, for example, even between Ahl Sunnah, when you find someone who may be from Ahl Sunnah, or maybe a person of Hezbiya, or maybe even a person of Takfir, which is not from Ahl Sunnah, but whatever the case may be, uh, the person who is in error or who has deviated with a uh, bid'ah or mistake, and that they cause fitna. Okay, this is an example. And if we see, how do we see and understand this principle? For example, if we have someone, for example, uh, amongst the Tekfiris in the English-speaking world, because we'll make it relevant for us, uh, we've known of a person, uh, Faisal, Faisal Jamaiki in, in the UK. And he was known as a person to be a fitna in discord, you know, in his discussions, uh, in his many tapes uh, and recorded lectures, and study circles from those who studied with him and from those who listened to him can testify to this uh, fact that he spent much of his time in his discussion in talking about Islamic topics in attacking Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah with tapes such as the conspiracy of the Saudi Salafis and all kind of names he, he came up with for attacking Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And he spent most of his time making takfir of, I, I don't know if there's a sect out there that he didn't make takfir of. I don't know what he said about Jamaat al I don't know what he said about Khwana Muslimin, but I know that the man made takfir in the way that we drink water. And that is hardly an exaggeration if you listen to his tapes. So to give an idea of what, what we're talking about when we look at this qaida, Turk, uh, uh, or al usul al fitna, Turk al ma'lum. Meaning 
that the usul of fitna, the usul of the, the problem in the discord, is leaving off that which is known to that which is unknown, for, or for that which is unknown. So, for example, Faisal was a guy graduated in uh, Riyadh in the Jamiat al Imam, came out, was virtually unknown, started his dawah, and really gained his more his notoriety and, and prominence through takfir. Okay? And takfir of mountains of knowledge, criticizing Imam al Albani, takfir bin Baz, takfir bin Uthaymeen, all these great mountains of knowledge who were, so that means it caused the youth, the Shabab that were influenced by him, to turk al ma'lum, leave the ma'lum, leave that which is known, meaning those great Imams who were known for knowledge and follow that the Ummah, even the detractors, even those people who dislike bin Baz, almost. Even some of the takfiris would praise him and knew his level of knowledge and status. Okay? But for the young youth in the West, of course, not uh, outside of the West pretty much or outside of the English-speaking world, we'll say, those people who listen to people like Faisal who are unknown, who are really nothing in the scale of knowledge compared to the ulama. I'm talking about compared to the scholars. And even to the du'a, we have a lot of talabat uh, al-ilm in the West, in the UK, and in America, and all around the world, who his knowledge is nothing compared to their knowledge, really. But, aside from that fact, here, when you listen to a person like him, you've left that which is known from those imams who have been teaching Islam for 40, 50 years of their lives, who teach tarbiyah, who teach the Minhaj Rabbani, you know, teach the way of the those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises in the Quran, and those people who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who you could not just easily get a statement of takfir or tabdi' or tafsik from them, but rather they looked at the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and looked at made knowledge based verdicts. Not verdicts based on one's desires and pulling a verdict out of their pockets because they someone disagreed with them or someone had problems with them or they just disagreed with their viewpoint. So the quickest and easiest way to discredit your opponent is by calling them a disbeliever or calling them a hypocrite or munafiq. This is the minhaj of Faisal, not the minhaj of the Rabbaniyun. So for people who follow figureheads such as him and others, that means they are, they leave the ma'lum, they leave that which is known, or those who are known, or that which is uh, established and known, not just established, but established on ilm wa fiqh wa basira wa hikmah, and wisdom, and insight, and they leave that for something ghayr ma'lum, something which is unknown, meaning someone who's a small figurehead, it sounds nice, he knows, he learns Arabic, uh, he learned, you know, some Quran or whatever he knew of the Quran, and he could quote ayats, and it sounded really good because he was really good at cutting and pasting fatawa of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and trying to make tatbiq or trying to apply it to everyday situations. He spent a lot of uh, time and energy with these types of statements without necessarily understanding the implications, without understanding even the usul. Even the usul, he made mistakes in usul of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. And we've talked about that in other videos. And there's many fantastic works out there uh, which clarify the errors, the many errors, even the usul ad deen of uh, Faisal Jamaiki, Abdullah Faisal al Jamaiki. So, the point is the foundation of the fitna leave what is known for that which is unknown. So, that's the just a general tasawwur or understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about this qa'ida, which is a very fantastic qa'ida. We're going to give a nice example that Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh Falah gave uh, in a more contemporary setting. So Sheikh Falah Ismail, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he explained when he was talking about this qa'ida, he gave a beautiful example. He gave an example of our Sheikh, one of the mashayikh I studied with in Medina, who is now one of the mashayikh in Kuwait, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Hisham, uh, known as uh, Abu Salah al-Afghani. 
Hafizullah Ta'ala. And Sheikh Falah gave an example of this qaida, of this principle, in that some of the people who are known for some scholarship uh, here in Sa Saudi, some mashayikh, or one particular sheikh who's known for, unfortunately, uh, speaking ill about other scholars of Ahl Sunnah and being quick with his tongue, quick to make a hukum. And unfortunately, there's a tishbi there that you have some individuals who make the ruling of tibdi of declaring a person to be an innovator, similar to the way those tekfiris like Faisal and Abu Qatada and uh, Abu Muhammad Maqdisi and others make tekfir uh, with, without the uh, the wabit, without the criterion, without the, uh, the right to do so. So you see a similarity there. So this particular sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abu Salah, was teaching in Farsi, okay? He was teaching in Persian, in, in Persian language, and I think this dars was being broadcast in uh, in Iran, I believe. And the masjid, I guess the youth, it was filled. The people were benefiting from him, and his his Farsi is excellent, and his Arabic, of course, is excellent. And he's, you know, he was, I think, born and raised in Kuwait. And anyhow, the sheikh was explaining excellent books as he has always been known for ilm wa, wa fadl wa fiqh and his tamqeen fil ilm and itqan uh, that he was explaining and this masjid was filled. Then this sheikh who is from here uh, was either asked about him or made a statement. So the youth there, they began, they abandoned the masjid. Okay, this massive gathering. So some of the youth, they uh, called Sheikh Falah in uh, Kuwait. I say, Sheikh Falah, what do you say about Abu Salah? Sheikh Abu Salah is, you know, you know Sheikh so-and-so has uh, refuted or said, leave his durus. And he said, you know, basically to make it, uh, to paraphrase what he said after he explained and he used his wisdom, as our ulama usually do, alhamd, he mentioned that he said, you know, Turk, Turk al Turk al Ma'lum ila ghair Ma'lum, leaving off that which is known. So Abu Salah was known. You were getting benefit, massive benefit. He taught many books and has been teaching you. I think the masjid had the the lectures had been going on for years, or for a long period of time, and. That means the youth, they were, they knew they were gaining massive benefit from someone from Ahl Sunnah Tiwa Jama'ah. Okay, you know that this man is from Ahl Sunnah and he's giving you benefit. You only called that into question when someone, and then he said, do you know Sheikh so-and-so? He said, no, Sheikh, we don't really know him. You know, he's maybe popular on certain websites. That's about it. And he spoke about Abu Salah, belittling Abu Salah and having the people leave him. So here's the example the Sheikh gave of showing how the foolishness, so the sheikh then, of course, defended Abu Salah or gave them an example which illustrated that he defended Abu Salah. And Abu Salah is well known for uh, uh, for his spreading of the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his strength in ilm wa hujjah wa bayan. And so uh, the sheikh gave that example that here the people were benefiting and then they left that which was beneficial and that which they knew was correct and khair for someone who they don't know, but just because they made a statement. And how many times do we have this in our communities, in uh, unfortunately, in the Muslim communities around the world, in fact? Because it's not just, uh, and I, I'll, I'll always emphasize, it's not just a thing we have in the West, but I'll give you some examples. For example, the people will ask questions about certain du'at in America. Sheikh so-and-so, he listens to Abu Hassan Ma'rabi, or he does such and such, or he does such and such. Sheikh, so they get a fatwa from the Sheikh to destroy his da'wah. And perhaps the people were benefiting tremendously. I can think of many du'ad, and so can you. Many examples like this, from a hukum from the Sheikh, and it destroys the beneficial da'wah, or the people they run to that which is ghayr ma'lum. Someone who doesn't even know the particular situation, may not even know the da'i, may not even know any of the Messiah, which is also something you have to realize, and we've talked about it countless times. One of the principles 
in usul uh, fiqh or qawaid fiqhia is al hukum ala shay far'in ala tasawwuri that a part of ruling on something is that you have correct information about it so for example if some if i've never seen a miswak and i go to america and i say to the people you know uh miswak you know i'm just giving an example cuz i don't make halal and haram i'm not a scholar and of course Halal and Haram comes from Allah Azza wa Jal, from the book and the uh, and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Ijma. But say, for example, someone asks me, and I say, no, 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 miswak is uh, impermissible to use, or I, you know, people, you know, miswak is such and such and such and such. But I've never seen one, and I don't know anything about it. Then that would be incorrect on my part. Why? Because it goes against that principle. Al hukum al shay farin al tasawrihi. The ruling on something. Part of ruling on something is that you have a correct understanding of it. So likewise, you find sometimes some scholars will make a ruling about an individual they know nothing about, and they know nothing about the implications of the ruling in those communities. So for example, maybe the people are learning the Sunnah of the Message of Allah, and there's mistakes in the community, and there's mistakes from a die. But the way the people pose maybe one individual, or a group of individuals pose a, a question to the sheikh, giving him an incorrect tasawwur, and maybe he falls for that. Maybe he trusts those individuals, and he falls for that and makes a ruling and says, yes, uh, so-and-so is a mubtadi'ah, he's, he's this, he's, he's a bal mudil, you know, he's misguided and he misguides others, and end of story. So it destroys the masalah, the benefit in that community, and the benefit of that da'i destroys his reputation and maybe some people even live, leave Islam and we have countless examples where we could detail those things but this is not the time nor place. I just wanted us to get an, an understanding of this qaida and this fa'ida that I, I listened to Sheikh Falah give about this beautiful qaida which is usul of fitna tarq al ma'loom ila ghair ma'loom and so the first al ma'loom Alif walam li ta'rif, you know, it has the alif walam in front of al ma'loom, leaving al ma'loom, leaving that which is known. When you have the alif walam, it shows that it's a uh, a definite noun, you know, that it's a it's a down a noun which is uh, you know you've distinguished. You're talking to me exactly about that. For example, if I say al kitab ala uh, ala ta'wilati or ala maktabi. Uh, if I say the book on my desk, that means I'm talking about that which is known. That means you know already which book I'm talking about. And if I say leaving that book which is known, leaving that which is known for that which is unknown. So I hope that that is clear. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect. Was for myself and the shaitan. Was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.